Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to overclock a 1070 Ti. All right, so before actually overclocking, I want to talk about this video card I have in front of me. This is the 1070 Ti. This is from MSI. It is a custom PCB, so it's a little bit bigger than the reference cards. It has its own personal cooler on it kind of custom cooler and the point is that just because this is a custom edition of the 1070 ti it doesn't mean it's any different than the reference edition i had the same questions when it came to the 1070 guide i made the 1080 ti guide i made uh, people said well that's not a 1070 that's not a 1080 ti and when it comes down to it they're all the same because the dies are the same if that makes sense the gpu die on this board is the same as you get for a reference card now, I have here a 770s, quite old card here, but it has the same kind of style cooler as the reference editions. Now, this is the one you're probably most familiar with, especially when you see advertisements for NVIDIA and their cards. So if you have a card like this, um, this, this guy still applies to you. It's just that when it comes to thermals, you're going to have a little bit higher temperature. Uh, these are designed, these old ones are designed for about 80 Celsius or so is when they kind of perform the best. Uh, the, the fan spins up a little higher, higher RPMs. And so when you have a custom card like this, the great thing about these is that your temperatures are generally lower, which means ultimately it means you can have a slightly higher overclock, sometimes not. It really depends on the luck of the draw. So let's go ahead and get started with overclocking. All right, so let's get started. Before we go into this video, make sure to check out the Boost 3.0 video I made before, which covers how Boost interacts with the Pascal GPU and how it affects your final overclock. Uh, definitely check out it out. It's in the link below in the description, or if you're on the Overclocking Club website, you can see it next to this video. So moving on from that, before we actually get started with the overclocking part, what you want to do is make sure you set a fan profile. So under the little gear symbol, go ahead and set a aggressive fan profile for yourself. Uh, I have it on custom right now. Basically, I just allow it to go to 100% at 90 uh, temperature of 90 Celsius. Um, you can adjust it the way you want. I just know that the default is a little bit too relaxed when it comes to overclocking. So I like to have my fan a little bit more aggressive when I start. And then once I finalize my overclock, I can change it to customate, you know, the loudness, or maybe I don't want the fan to be running that high. So do that, and let's move on. Now you see the fan jumped right to 60%, 66%, I should say. Um, after that, you want to go ahead and set the power limit and temperature limit to the maximum. And apply it. As you see here, this card I'm using, which is an MSI card, has ability to go to 133%. Normally, it's about 120 is the reference limit. Uh, once again, this is not going to cause any problems to your card. It just allows it to draw more power, allowing you to optimize your overclock. Temperature limit, 92, still within the safe range. Uh, if your card is getting to 92 Celsius, you might want to look and see if something's going on, like maybe your fan speed uh, is not set. Maybe it's set for zero. But besides that, you're pretty much never going to get to 92 Celsius. So the first thing I want to do is raise the memory clock speed. I am recording this on a different computer, so if it does crash, the video will still uh, record. Unlike my previous videos, I use Shadowplay. This one is just a whole different computer. So I might be able to show you what happens when things do crash. So first thing I like to do for memory at least is to raise it a little bit, about 100 and run it for a few minutes you'll definitely see some artifacts sometimes these will crash up straight out and I'll show you here in a minute what I mean when it's when I say crashing um, so you run it a few minutes see if you have anything noticeable different in your image quality if it sparkles or items popping them out you might be on the verge now I've noticed for at least a 1070 and a 1080 Ti there's many companies that make memory this Samsung, there's a Micron, there's a, I think there's one other company that makes 
memory. So your mileage is going to vary. Samsung has been known to have a higher overclock when it comes to memory. Micron, I'm very surprised this video card has Micron, but it was able to go pretty high. So after that, you want to go ahead and just raise it again. So 200 and you just keep going until you get a crash because that's the only way to tell how far you went. So I'm going to crash this video card just to show you guys what I mean. Uh, about 500 is kind of where it's about the safe area for this card for me. If I go to 550, you'll see what happens. Still good. I think 550 does crash if I leave it long enough running. So let's let's go to 575. Yep, and there it freezes, freezes right there. Yep, let's go back to 500. So th that's pretty much what you're going to get. You're going to get kind of freezing. Sometimes it won't freeze. It'll just start pixelating and uh, lots of weird images that go on screen, scrambled and all that. So uh, that's what you want to look out for. So once you find that maximum number, I found it about 550s were pretty much where I'm safe. I believe I think 500 is more of like a stable number long term. So that's what I'm setting it to. Then back it off to zero and start over with the core clock. Now core clock is much more mm, stiff, rigid. You're not going to be able to get 300, 400 out of it because the way the core clock works, just like I explained in boost, is that it's the boost is adding onto your core clock. So you have a boost, you have a base number, and then you have a boost number. All this does is add onto the base number, and your boost goes on top of that. So it's like overclocking and overclock. So definitely start off in slow numbers. Start very low, like 25. Run it for a bit. I already done this before, so there's no point in doing this through a video. So you go to 50, and you just keep going, going. I was able to get to about. 190, maybe 192. And I got a very stable, I left it for about a good hour. 190 is pretty much my limit. If I go above that, you'll probably see a hard crash here. So let's go 200. 225. But the point of this is that if you do let the card go long enough, it will crash, especially if you think, say, 225 is stable. Make sure to run it more in a minute. Give it a good 30, 40 minutes. And then if you are satisfied with that, then play some games. And if it runs, runs fine in games, then you're pretty much good to go. So let's go to, uh, what's it, 250. Give it, there you go, hard crash. So I definitely felt more comfortable at about 200. Uh, 190 was more stable number. Alright, so once you have that, once again, set it back to zero and we're going to start fresh. So when you're combining the both of them together, I could tell you that when I did 200 plus the high memory, it crashed the, the video card. So what you want to do is what your maximum value is and you want to back it off a little bit. So I know 200 is around my maximum value, so I do 190, which is more safe, and then I know that 500 is safe. And you may notice that your core speed will drop a little bit because that's a boost for you. Basically, boost acts based on how much voltage is getting, how much, uh, what the thermal temperature is, what the performance of the demand of the game is. So you'll never see kind of a steady number. You'll see a number that's constant, but never exactly the same. So I want to wrap this up for you guys. Uh, a little bit rambling, but that is the very basics of overclocking uh, the 1070 Ti video card. Um, if you like this, definitely give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know how high you went on your video card. And as always, thanks for watching. So just remember, have fun overclocking. Ow, hot, hot. Yeah, um, grabbing a card directly off benchmarks is not a good idea. It's kind of hot, hot. I gotta tell you, I'll cool down first and I'll do this again.